Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our new playlist on elections and voting. We're going to start here on page 14 for your notes, okay? So you open that up for me, that'd be really appreciated. If you need to make that happen. Uh, we're looking at how to become a candidate, how to get your name on the ballot if you want to run for office. So we're looking at elections two ways. Uh, one is from the candidate point of view, one from the voter point of view, starting with our candidate, okay? So here are my slides, let's take a look at those real quick. Um, our goal is to figure out how you become a candidate, how you get your name on that ballot right now for this first little short uh, video we got here. So, our election process is very long. We'll focus on the presidential one because that's one's in the news the most, but they're pretty much the same for all areas, um, just that the presidential has electoral college in it too, which we'll get to later on, okay? No bigs. So, how do you get your name on the ballot? You say you want to run. You declare your candidacy, you'd be like, I want to do that, okay? Great, cool. And make sure you meet the requirements, number one. So we'll talk about the requirements in a second. And you have to get signatures on a ballot or on a, um, a petition, if you will, that says, hey, I want to be on the ballot, okay? Uh, in addition to that, uh, Wisconsin, uh, if you want to be on the ballot for Wisconsin, you need 2,000 to be the governor, uh, 2,000 to be a senator, 1,000 for the House Representative, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In some states, you have to pay a small fee as well and be like, hey, I'm going to pay us a little bit of money, okay? So those are the basic main steps you got to do to make that happen. Um, Going forward here, uh, remember the requirements. So the House of Representatives, you want to run for the House, you'll be 25 years old, live in the U.S., for, be a citizen in the U.S. for seven years, so you can be a, a naturalized citizen not born in the United States, and live in the state and the district where you're, where you're chosen from. So they'll check and make sure that you are living in the right place. You're not saying you live somewhere else. So those are big ones for House of Representatives. In the Senate, a little bit different. You have to be 30, right, which we talked about earlier. You have to be nine years a citizen, so you can be an, an, a naturalized citizen, but at least for nine years. And again, live in the state where you're elected from. And so that's why people make a big deal about, you know, if you live somewhere else or whatever it might be. Uh, Hillary Clinton moved to New York, should be a senator from, from New York, that kind of thing. In Wisconsin, uh, the latest uh, senatorial election, uh, Eric Hovde and, and Tammy Baldwin, one of the big arguments was that, Eric Huffney lives, uh, is accused of living in California part of the time. Does he live enough in Wisconsin? Okay, that was one of the accusations made in that election. Uh, for president, uh, we know 35. You got to be 35. You've been born in the United States, a natural born citizen, and lived for at least 14 years. So let's say you were born here but lived somewhere else, and then came back home. You got to be at least 14 years in the United States. Okay. Now, there is something called the FEC, uh, sorry, I apologize, in Wisconsin. If you want to run for a Wisconsin job, so governor, representative, all that kind of stuff, the, the things are a little bit different, okay? One, you got to be a U.S. citizen, that's it. Doesn't say how long, just U.S. citizen. you got to be 18 years old and live in Wisconsin or the area that you represent. So if I'm representing Assembly District 40, which is parts of Iowa, Sauk, and uh, Columbia County, I have to make sure I live in that section, okay? Make sure my address matches up. Uh, with all the new maps that Wisconsin drew uh, in 2024, some people had to change where they live from, change where they represent because their maps change. It's just one of the things. One rule that Wisconsin has that is not in the federal stuff is that you may not be a felon and run for a Wisconsin position. So you cannot be a, a convicted felon if you are running for uh, office in Wisconsin. Um, lastly, okay, when do you make things official? So. Uh, essentially, you're official and have to file your paperwork with the FEC, the Federal Election Commission, when you have raised at least $5,000 or spent at least $5,000 on your campaign. And by registering with them, that means you are official. You have to keep track of all your expenses, all your donations, all that kind of stuff, so that it's all up on the up and up and legal. All right, that's the first video. Thank you all for your time, and we'll come back with some more in a little bit.